This baby blanket pattern is made for beginners. If you know how to cast on, knit, and purl, you can make this blanket. I'll teach you the steps for the stitch pattern, how to bind off, and how to weave in your ends. This baby blanket uses a really easy and fun knit stitch, which happens to be one of my favorites, actually. It creates this wavy rib look, but is nothing more than an easy combination of knits and purls. When it comes to the yarn, you will need DK weight yarn, which is sometimes called light number three in big box stores. And for size A, you'll need approximately 280 yards, 256 meters. Size B, which is the sample, you'll need approximately 800 yards, 732 meters. The sample uses Yarn B Sugar Wheel Cotton, which is 100% cotton yarn with 335 yards, 306 meters per 5 ounces or 142 grams, and I use the colorway Harbor Wish. When it comes to yarn substitutions, you can use any yarn that will match gauge or at least get very close to matching gauge. An easy way to find a similar yarn is to choose something with similar yardage or meterage to weight as the sample. The sample is 335 yards, 306 meters per 142 grams, so you want something close to that. I recommend choosing a yarn that is within maximum of 20 to 30 yards, 18 to 27 meters of the sample. 142 is kind of a strange amount, so to make it easier, that would work out to be approximately 236 yards, 216 meters per 100 grams. You can always just take your yardage and divide it by grams to get the yards per one gram and then multiply that by 149 grams to see if it gives you anything close to 236 yards, 216 meters, like the sample. So I went through and found some yarns from popular websites that have similar yardage to meterage amounts. Now, big disclaimer, I have not used any of these yarns to make this blanket. I cannot guarantee they will work. Everyone has different tension. The only way to guarantee it for yourself is to swatch. That being said, here are some yarns I found that have a similar approximate yardage or meter. Many of these are more affordable options. As far as needles, you'll need a set of US 5 needles or any size that will give you the correct gauge. Now I recommend circular needles that are at least 24 inches, 60 centimeters long, because even though you will be working this project flat, I find it easier to hold all your stitches with circular needles. You can definitely use straight needles if you prefer. As far as other materials, you'll need a yarn needle and stitch markers are optional. The gauge is 22 stitches, 30 rows, equals four inches or 10 centimeters in wavy rib stitch, which is worked flat. And this right here is the wavy rib stitch. So you'll need to cast on a multiple of six plus two stitches, and it's an eight row repeat. There are two sizes for this pattern. Size A is 17 and three quarter inch, 45 centimeters wide, by 18 inch, 45 and a half centimeters long. And size B, which is the sample size, is 29 and three quarters inch, 75 and a half centimeters wide, by 31 and three quarter inch, 80 and a half centimeters long. So the sizing will be written out in the pattern as size A first and then size B in parentheses just right after it. So when the pattern says to cast on 98 parentheses 164, that means to cast on 98 for size A and 164 for size B. There are timestamps in the video description and along the bottom of this video. And you can get the printable PDF version in my Etsy shop for just a dollar, but everything you need to know to make this pattern is in this video. The PDF is there if you want a printable version or want to support my patterns. You're going to cast on either 98 or 164 stitches depending on the size you're making. Now, I used a long tail cast on method, but you can use whichever method you prefer. And for this pattern, I definitely recommend working on circular needles. You could work it on flat needles, but you're gonna have a lot of stitches here. So it's just much easier if you have a set of circulars where you have a lot of room here for all your stitches to be held. Now for your beginning garter, you're going to work eight rows of just plain garter. So just knit across every single row for eight rows. So I'll go ahead and show you how to begin your garter. So this is our tail yarn just hanging down and our working yarn is around in the back and you're going to go into the front loop of the first stitch as if to knit. So into the front loop and come out the back, kind of crisscross your needles like this, bring the yarn over the right needle from front to back, pull that yarn through and slide off the old stitch. So you're just going to do that all the way across for eight rows. And I know the baby blanket 
has a much larger cast on, but for the purpose of teaching you how to do the stitch pattern and everything, I cast on far fewer stitches, okay? So if you were knitting the baby blanket, it would have way more stitches than just this. This is just my example. So go ahead and continue knitting across your whole entire row and then knit seven more rows of garter. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you back here for your stitch pattern. So once you've finished your garter, it is time to work in the stitch pattern. I've written it on screen if you wanna work ahead, but I will be walking you through the repeat. So for row one, you're going to work a knit three followed by a repeat of a purl two, knit four, until you have five stitches left, and then you'll work a purl two followed by a knit three. So if you've looked at the screen, you might notice that every row has at least three stitches at the beginning and end that are knit stitches. And we do this because we want a border on the right and left edges of our project that are in garter. So if you're like me, you might find it easier to place a couple stitch markers at the beginning and end of your row to mark off three stitches on either side of your actual stitch pattern. So I'll show you how to work that. This is not written in the pattern, if you, especially if you get the PDF version. It will not tell you when to slip the marker. Just know that when you come to the marker, you just slip it from your left hand needle to your right hand needle. So we're going to start out our row by working a knit three. So go into the front loop of the first stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and work two more of those. Now you're going to place your marker on your right hand needle, okay? This is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just find it easier to mark it off with a marker, but you don't have to. So for our repeat, we're going to work a purl two followed by a knit four until there are five stitches left. So bring your yarn in between your needle to the front, and we're going to purl two. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And again. And now you're going to bring your yarn in between your needles to the back and knit four. So go into the front loop of the next stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off. Do that three more times and that is your repeat. So go ahead and repeat that purl two followed by a knit four until you have five stitches left and I'll meet you back here for that. So once you get to the final five stitches, you're going to work a purl two followed by a knit two. So bring your yarn in between your needles to the front. Go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. Now bring your yarn in between your needles to the back. And now if you're using markers, you can go ahead and place the marker on your right hand needle now and knit the final three stitches. So go into the front loop of the next stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. You can go ahead and turn your work and you're ready to work row two. Row two is a knit five, followed by a repeat of a purl four, knit two, until you have only three stitches left, which you will knit. So you're going to bring the yarn around your needle to the back, and you're going to knit five. And remember, every time you come to a stitch marker, you just slip it like it's not there, okay? So go into the front loop of the next stitch to crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off. Once you get to the marker, you know you've knit three, but we need to knit five. So slip the marker and knit two more. And now you're going to work your repeat, which is a purl four followed by a knit two until you have only three stitches left. So bring your yarn in between your needle to the front and you're going to purl four. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and do that three more times. After that, you can bring your yarn in between your needles to the back. So we're going to knit two. So go into the front loop of the next stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. And that's it. You're going to repeat the purl four followed by knit two until you have only three stitches left. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for those final stitches. And the last few stitches of row two are just to knit three. That's our little garter border. So just slip your marker and knit three. Again, the pattern's not gonna tell you when to slip the marker. You just know when you come to it to slip it. So go ahead and turn your work. Bring your yarn around the needle to the back and you're going to repeat rows one and two one more time. So row three, you're going to repeat row one. Row four, you're going to repeat row two. 
go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for row five. So for row five, you're going to work a knit six followed by a repeat of a purl two, knit four until you have only eight stitches left and you will work a purl two, knit six. So go into the front loop with the first stitch from front to back, crisscrossing your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that five more times. And remember, when you come to the marker, you just slip it like it's not there. And we need to have six total knit stitches. We only have three, so do three more. And now you're ready to work your repeat, which is a purl two, knit four. Bring your yarn in between your needles to the front. Go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left. Yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. Now bring your yarn in between your needles to the back. And you're going to knit four. So go into the front loop of the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, slide off. Do that three more times and that's it for your repeat. So go ahead and work a purl two followed by a knit four until you have only eight stitches left and I'll meet you back here for that. Make sure to count the ones on the other side of the marker if you have a marker. So for the last eight, we're going to purl two, knit six. So bring your yarn in between your needles to the front. Go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off and again. Now you're going to bring your yarn in between your needles to the back one final time and you're going to knit six and since we only have six stitches left you're just going to knit to the end of the row and when you get to the marker you're just going to slip it from your left needle to your right and that's it go ahead and turn your work and you're ready to work row six after you've turned your work you can bring your yarn around your needle to the back and for row six you're going to work a knit three purl three and then a repeat of a knit two purl four until you have eight stitches left and you'll work a knit two, purl three, knit three. So we start with a knit three, go into the front loop of the first stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that two more times. And then if you have a marker here, go ahead and slip it. And then you can bring your yarn in between your needles to the front and you're going to purl three. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that two more times. Now you bring your yarn in between your needles to the back and now you can work your repeat which is a knit two followed by a purl four. So go into the front loop of the next stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off and again. And now you can bring your yarn in between your needles to the front and you're going to work a purl four. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that three more times. And that's it for your repeat. So bring your yarn in between your needles to the back go ahead and repeat that knit two purl four until you have only eight stitches left and I'll meet you back here for that. And when you get down to the last eight stitches, you can bring your yarn in between your needles to the back and we're going to work a knit two. So go into the next stitch, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off and again. Now bring your yarn in between your needles to the front and you're going to work a purl three. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that two more times. Bring your yarn in between your needles to the back and slip that marker if you have one. And then you're going to knit your final three stitches. And that's it. For rows seven and eight, you're just going to repeat rows five and six. So row seven is a repeat of row five and row eight is a repeat of row six. And that's it for your stitch pattern. You're going to repeat rows one through eight an additional 14 or 27 times for a total of 112 or 216 additional rows. And then you're going to work an end garter edging. This is almost exactly identical to the beginning garter edging. You're just going to work seven rows of garter. So you're just going to work rows one through seven where you're going to knit across and then you bind off. I recommend working a standard knit bind off, but you can do any bind off that you prefer. In the same way that we added a garter edging to the bottom, we're gonna do the same thing to the top. So after we've done all of our repeats in the stitch pattern, you're going to work eight rows of garter. And since we're done with our stitch pattern, you can remove these stitch markers as you go. So go ahead and go into the front loop of the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And you just keep doing that all the way across. And when you come to a stitch marker, you can just remove it. And when you come to the second stitch marker, you can just remove it as well and finish off the row. You're going to do a standard knit bind off. If you've never done that before, I'll show you how to do that here. You are essentially just knitting two and then pulling the second knit stitch over the first and off your right hand needle. So go ahead and knit the first two stitches. Go into the front loop of the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. And I like to keep my tension a little bit looser so that my bind off isn't too tight. So now we're going to go into the second stitch on your right hand needle and pull it over the first and off. 
go into the front loop of the first stitch from left to right with your left needle and I hold on to the second stitch here with my index finger and then you pull that first stitch over and off. I like to readjust the size of this stitch so it's not super tight on my right hand needle and you've just bound off one stitch. So now you're going to knit one, bind one off, knit one, bind one off all the way across your row. So go into the next stitch into the front loop, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And then you go into the first stitch here, pull it over the second. So hold on to the second with your index finger, go into the front loop from left to right, pull it over and off. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way across. And you want to make sure that you're not doing this too tightly. Your bind off should have a little bit of stretch to it. If it's stretching too much that it's like rolling over on itself, then you can just have tighter tension. And if it's like super tight where you can't really move it, then you need to loosen up your tension. You can do this by lifting up on this stitch here and by knitting looser than you would normally. Go ahead and do that until you have one stitch left and I'll meet you back here for that. When you only have one stitch left, you can go ahead and cut a tail long enough to weave in later and then you take your right hand needle and you can just pull that stitch out. It's not going to unravel unless you physically pulled it out the other side so you're safe. And now it's time to weave in your ends. So go ahead and thread your tail yarn through a yarn needle. Now I say this with every project, there's no one right way to do this. You just kind of weave them in however best you can to kind of hide the end. You don't want to go straight vertical or straight horizontal. You want to go a little bit diagonal and that's the best advice that I can get. So typically, so you do not want to go through this. Okay. If you go through that, it will undo that stitch. So instead I'm going to go around the edge here. I'm just going to keep following it up the edge real fast. There we go. And that kind of neatened up that corner for me. Now I'm going to go a little bit in and diagonal. So I'm going to go around that loop there. Around this stitch here. Down through this one. Around the right leg of the next one and up. I, honestly, I, there's no rhyme or reason, especially with garter. I'm sure there's a better way and you can look it up for yourself, but I honestly just do whatever seems to work best for me, okay? There we go, and now I'm going to go down, I think, and split and split one below it. Okay, pull through. And you can go ahead and pull in all directions to make sure that it's sitting well in your pattern. Cut your yarn close to where you wove it in. It's a little bit noticeable, but honestly, it's not that bad. Now you might be looking at this going, why is the bottom of your pattern flaring out so much? Okay, so if I look at it like this, the top is flared out and so is the bottom. And that's because it needs blocked. My garter is going to lay more flat than the stitch pattern here. The stitch pattern is a, a ribbed pattern, so it's going to want to kind of close in together. And when I block it, it will block out more in like a square. I hope you guys found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe for more. I'll have lots more free patterns for you in the future.